something a little bit different to fashion content. I'm taking you with us on a day trip to Oxford. Our main goal for today is to visit some of the filming locations for Harry Potter and to hopefully explore Oxford a little bit. The weather is not too bad at the moment. We do have umbrellas with us just in case it's gonna rain. Hair is looking very different to what it looked like when I left the house this morning. I think humidity is one of my least favorite things in the whole world. I managed to get some footage of what I'm wearing today before I left the house. Comfort is key because we have a lot of walking to do so I try to keep things casual and comfortable. So for today's outfit I went with some very neutral brown tones, just a very casual outfit. I'm wearing my wool tailored trousers from Arquette and my lovely beige wool high neck top from Uniqlo. My trench coat is my good old trench coat from Nasty Gal which I've been wearing a lot this year and then my trainers are from Veja you've seen these so many times before and then for my bag I'm going with this lovely tan bag from Katie Luxton that's the outfit for today hopefully it's not gonna rain first stop was Joe and the Juice to get some food and then we walked to the first place on our list, Bodleian Library. We knew we didn't have time to visit everything at Bodleian Library so we focused mainly on visiting the Divinity School. It was built between 1427 and 1483. The ticket was £2.50 and this place was absolutely stunning. A few scenes from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire were filmed there. We were very impressed by the amazing architecture and attention to detail. Then we moved on to Christ Church College, which is one of the largest and most popular colleges at Oxford. It has a very long history, it was built in 1546 and the architecture is grand. The ticket was £16 with audio guide tour included. It is definitely worth visiting if you are a Harry Potter fan. Here's the stunning Burgley staircase where lots of scenes from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone were filmed. We also visited the Great Dining Hall, which is one of the largest at Oxford, and it was used as inspiration for the iconic dining hall in Harry Potter. We've just left Christ Church College, and now we're going to New College. Some of the scenes from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire have been filmed at New College. My camera battery just died, so I've had to change to my phone and I've never used my phone camera before to shoot so hopefully the quality won't be too bad. The last place we wanted to visit, New College which was founded in 1379. The ticket was £8 and we received a map guide. I was most impressed by this stunning tree also known as the Drake Malfoy tree. It's the place where Draco gets turned into a ferret in the Goblet of Fire. The gardens at New College are also worth visiting, especially this time of year. The colours were absolutely stunning. On our way to find a place to eat, we stumbled upon the Bridge of Sighs, famous for its similarity to the Bridge of Sighs in Venice. From there we decided to go to one of the most historic pubs in Oxford, Turf Tavern. Its foundations date back to 1381 and it was the perfect place to have our dinner before leaving Oxford. Good morning everyone, hope you are all well. It's been a few days since that trip to Oxford. I did manage to get some footage but I'm still getting used to the new camera so the footage might not be the best quality ever. I've just left my orthodontist, I've had my monthly checkup just to change the elastics, make sure those gaps are closing, make sure we're getting closer to taking them off. I did manage to get some footage when I was inside the practice 
I was actually quite nervous about um, asking my orthodontist for permission to film inside because I've never done it before but she was so lovely about it it turns out her sister actually um, does YouTube videos as well so she was very nice about it and she made the whole experience very positive for me I'm just gonna pop into town and I'm gonna take you all with me I'm gonna pop into H&M to see what new bits they have in is about a 30 minute walk I thought about taking a taxi but then I thought do you know what this is the perfect way to get some steps in for today it was supposed to rain but as per usual the weather did a 360 and now the sun's coming out the clouds are going away I did come prepared though I've brought my umbrella with me I've got my Wellington boots on a trench coat and then my cashmere jumper underneath it's a beautiful autumn day so I'm just gonna try and make the most of it And it's just after four o'clock so I've definitely been gone for more than I planned but I really enjoyed myself I really had a very nice day seeing all the beautiful colors this time of year is really something that brings me joy so I'm really glad that I took the time today to go to the park and just in case anybody's curious how many steps I've done today I've done over 15,000 steps today I have no idea how i mean it does make sense because i've been gone from home most of the day and i've walked for most of the day i'm quite proud of myself i mean over 15,000 steps is not what i usually do in the day because i spend most of my days indoors and editing and creating content and things like that i ended up buying a few things so i'm gonna show you what i've bought and i'm very excited because these are pieces that i've been looking for everything nearly everything is from h&m so one of the things that i'm most excited about that i've purchased from h&m are these chelsea boots and you might remember if you've seen my autumn capsule wardrobe video that i told you guys that i didn't have a pair of ankle boots just yet like for casual every day and I wanted a pair of boots that wasn't too casual so I was looking for something that could elevate those very casual outfits and this pair is definitely it like this is everything that I've been looking for and I'm so glad I bought these so I found these in the sales section and they had a sticker on a red sticker and it said 30 pounds and it did feel like it was too good to be true and when I got to the till I asked the sales assistant to double check the price for me and it turned out that they weren't actually in the sale I still bought them because I was just very very happy with these and like I said they're everything that I've been looking for and they're not too expensive either in my opinion for 100% leather I think these were around £60 or £70, which is definitely a bit pricey, but again, they're 100% leather and they're everything that I've been looking for. And before finding these in H&M, I saw a similar pair at Office, I believe, from a brand called Vagabond. I'll put a picture of them um, up here somewhere. Very, very similar to the H&M ones, but 
more than double what I paid for these ones. I tried to find them on the H&M website and I just couldn't so they're either out of stock or no longer available or they're just available in store I have no idea but I'll make sure to include the number as well so just in case you want to find them in your local H&M store you'll be able to do that and then the next thing that I got from H&M is this absolutely beautiful tailored long coat it's not the most amazing quality but in my opinion it's decent quality and I just absolutely love the fit. It's nicely tailored, has very nice structured shoulder pads. It also has that classic slit at the back which in my opinion makes it look a lot more expensive than it is. And I've bought it in a size 10 and it's a very nice neutral colour so I know that I'll get a lot of wear out of this one because it goes with pretty much everything from my wardrobe. And the last thing that I purchased, not from H&M, but from Next, is this really cozy, chunky knit jumper. I'm definitely in need of a few chunky knit jumpers, such as this one. I love this one because it has a very nice um, pattern detail, and it's very nice and chunky, very nice and cozy, but it's not too oversized. I went for size extra small. The small would have been way too oversized, the medium would have drowned me so instead I just decided to size down and there's honestly no shame in that like I still consider it an oversized knit jumper it's just not extremely oversized in my opinion which is not very flattering on me and my body and it was really affordable only £36, I think they had other colours available as well although I'm not 100% sure I will link this one below together with everything else that I've purchased today. So I think I'm going to end the vlog here. There was something else that I wanted to mention to you guys, um, a few changes that I'm doing when it comes to my Instagram content. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that I mentioned recently that I plan on focusing mainly on video content. So the last time that I've tried to take photos outside, I think this was about two weeks ago, we had planned a full day of shooting content outside as we usually do, like we plan a whole day to shoot as basically as many outfits as we possibly can sometimes it's six sometimes it's eight sometimes it's more than that but anyways we had a whole day planned and I was so excited because I had some really nice autumn outfits that I was um, very excited to shoot we found the perfect spot I take my camera out the bag just to double check everything as I normally would and then I just realized that I had no memory card with me, I had no battery and to me it was kind of like a sign before that day I was seriously thinking about if I should continue with photo content or if I should focus mainly on video for Instagram between the engagement rate for my pictures and the engagement rate for my reels there's just a very huge gap my engagement rate for my Instagram page was really affected negatively by my engagement for my photos Instagram is turning into this platform almost identical to TikTok so photo content doesn't get as much engagement as it used to, they're prioritizing video content and it's honestly amazing to me how much engagement you get with video content and how quickly you can grow if you prioritize being consistent with video content. So for the first few days after I made the decision to not prioritize taking pictures anymore, I felt guilty, not gonna lie, like I felt like a complete failure. I asked myself, does this mean that I'm not willing to work hard enough? Does this mean that I'm lazy? Does this mean that I cannot do it? Or um, silly questions like that. And I'm not trying to complain, I'm, I'm just saying that it's a lot of things on my plate. This for me is all about prioritizing different things. That point when I feel 
burnt out like I don't want to get to that point I don't want to lose the passion for it which you can lose if you add too many things on your plate and you try to do everything and you try to be as successful as possible and it is a job but it's very important to me at least to keep that passion alive so it's not as dramatic as I've made it out to be sometimes I think who who even cares about this stuff is just a change that I'm making and I just wanted to share that with you and basically just um, give my thoughts on it. I know so many of you enjoy seeing my photo content that I post on Instagram and for those of you that do I'm really sorry you won't be seeing them for a while but it is what it is it's just at the end of the day I have to do what's um, best for me I guess. So that is the end of this vlog. I hope you enjoyed this video. I do plan on making vlogs a regular thing on my YouTube channel. I'm just not 100% sure that I'm gonna be posting them weekly. It might be every two weeks. I'm just getting used to vlogging cameras and um, doing all these things. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one.